Praise the Lord. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for bringing us into this new month. Thank you for today's prophetic service. Father, we glorify you. You have done amazing things in our life. From January to now, it has been testimony of your blessings. We, we celebrate you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. I welcome each and every one of you with joy and excitement to this very new month. The month God has prophetically declared. As your laughter is here, and many and all shall laugh with you. I pray that prophetic declaration will be answerable, will be answered in your own life in the name of Jesus Christ. Your life will reflect the declarations. Your laughter is here, and all shall laugh with you. What a glorious de declarations. What a glorious intention that God intend to do in your life and in my life. All we need to do is to put our faith online. He said, who have said a thing and it has not come to pass. No one, no one who have ever said a thing and it come to pass when the Lord have not so commanded. God have spoken already that in the course of this month, your month will, the month will be your month of perfection. The month will be the crowning of many things that God intend to do in your life and in my life. It shall be your month of fulfillment of prophecy, fulfillment of the promises of the Lord upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. It's such a prophetic month on its own. 
especially that of this year. When you look at Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 24, in verse 23, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and an holy convocation. Now, when you go down from that and you come to chapter 34, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel that are saying, The fifteen days of the seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacle for seven days unto the Lord. Now, come to verse 38. He said, beside the Sabbath day of the Lord, and beside your gift, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offering, which ye gift unto the Lord, also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the fourth day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Talking about celebration upon celebration. Now, verse 41, he said, And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord, seven days in the year. He said, It shall be a starter forever in your generation. Ye shall celebrate in the tenth month. Ye shall celebrate in the tenth month. I pray that the happening in our life, in the month of this seventh month, that is the month of July, we bad celebration in our individual life in the name of Jesus Christ. It is a month of perfection. It's a month of celebration. As we talk about the might, as we praise God, His mighty act will be evidence in our life in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you keep celebrating, rejoicing at the doing of the Lord in your life, get ready for another dimension of celebration. It will be a month of signs and wonders. It will be a signs of miracles, happening of God beyond your widest imagination. That is why I say in the seventh month, Ye shall celebrate in the seventh month. Ye shall celebrate. Celebration will be surrounding you everywhere you go in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's get back to Genesis chapter 21. But before that, I would like to let each and everyone know why we hold this service. It's to give a wing to your mom is to give you spiritual leverages, is to empower you for amazing result. You know, everyone on earth has an appointed leader that God has set over him. And one of the things God has done with these appointed leaders is to give them the tongue of the learned, the tongue of the learned. You will see that in Isaiah chapter 50, and I will read just that before we proceed. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. Jeremiah speaking, he said, The Lord has given me the tongues of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in the season to them that are weary. He said, He wakened my he wakened morning by morning. He wakened my ear to hear as the learned. As the learned. And in verse 5, he said, The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Praise the Lord. There, there, there is God's arrangement to lay into the heart of leader to speak into the life of his followers. 
And to do that, he gave every leader the tongues of the learned. Every weariness over your life should be awaiting the arrival of the word of your leaders. That's how God operates. That's how God does his things. So I'm not just standing here at this hour to speak to you as a member of this great ministry, as someone in the body of Christ, as someone that is connected to this ministry. I'm not standing here in vain. I'm standing by the authority of Jesus to speak into your life. For it pleased Jesus to separate me from my mother's womb and put me in the ministry. What is the work of a minister? Let's quickly look at that as we journey. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. What is the work of a minister? And verse 11, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 11. He said, and he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. What did he give them? We've just had. He has given us the tongue of the learned. He has put us in ministry. He has given us divine assignment to you. He has raised us and equipped us for you to feel and to remove the part of your life that is almost suffering from devastation. That's why God raised us. What, what was it for? He said, we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the status of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be not more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sled of men, and cunning crafty whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly jointed together and compacted by that which every joint supply according to the effectual working in the measure of part making increase of the body unto the edifying itself in love. Look at verse 17. He said, this I say therefore, testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in vanity of their mind. And he said, verse 18, he said, Having the understanding that having the understanding that can be, be alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of the heart. Now, when you look at it, there was a reason why he gave some those offices. He gave them for the perfecting of the sin. For the perfecting of the sin. He gave them for the perfecting of the same. He said, for, in verse 12, he said, for the perfecting of the same, for the work of ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. What he said to Jeremiah is still exactly what he's repeating here. I speak into your life, and I speak this morning prophetically, that whatever areas of your life that is looking dried up, I command the abundance of God. I command the reins of God. I command a refreshing from the throne of grace to come upon you. That weariness is over. In the name of Jesus Christ, that weariness, that barrier, this new month, God have declared that it shall be a memorial moment, a season of celebration. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, you will have occasion to celebrate. Things will work out well with you. Destiny helper will knock at your door. <laughs> you are the one who have been looking for them. They will now be the one looking for you. Where you have not applied, somebody will give a referral and you shall be sent for. J Joseph never applied to the palace. Listen to me. Joseph never apply to the palace. Daniel had no application in the palace. 
they were sent for. They were sent for. So when I say where you have not applied, it looked like a joke. But I tell you, there is still a mystery of referral. God will cause someone to be at the right place to speak about you, and you shall be sent for in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't forget, Joseph never applied. Daniel never applied. The same way, it will no longer be by your effort. It will be by the miracle working hand of God. Because celebration cannot be dry. You cannot fake celebration. And God said, in this seventh month, we shall celebrate. In this seventh month, we shall celebrate. Your own Christmas begin from this month in the name of Jesus Christ. You will celebrate to the end of this year. The second half is meant to be ahead. I mean, it's meant to be set aside for celebration. As you are getting to the end of this year, it will be getting better and better in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, with all that has happened to me, somebody say, with all the news I have had, with all the disappointment, the cancellation, the decline of certain things, the denial of many things, I don't care what it has been. God has always get his work done by his movement. God is moving in your life in a strange way this month. And from this month to the end of this year, you will have occasion to celebrate in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Such was the story of Abraham and Sarah. Such was the story of Abraham and Sarah. Sometimes when we have gone through difficult times, it, it makes something that you are told by a man of God make no sense. But you see, your experience and your situation cannot negate the power of the word of God. It cannot negate it. Just the same way you have gone through a hard time, it is the same way God has made his word a hammer. And there is no stone that can resist a hammer when we persist. I see you breaking forth in the name of Jesus Christ. I see someone online right now. I see your story changing right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's story is changing in the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 21, and I will read from verse 1. He said, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare a son, and bare Abraham a son. In his old age, at the set time, of which God has spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born, born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son, being eight days old, as God has commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his, when his son Isaac was born unto him. Verse 6 and 7 is our emphasis. And that is where God picked the team of this man to speak to us of what he intend to do. He said, and Sarah said, God has made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. And verse 7, and he said, and she said, who will have said unto Abraham, that Sarah should have given children suck, for I have borne him a son in old age. I read voice translation for you verse from verse 4. He said, when his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. 
verse 5. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Verse 6. He said, I'm reading from NIV, sorry. Sarah said, God has brought me to laughter. God has brought me to laughter. And everyone who Uh, and she added, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I bore him a son, his old age, in his old age. What happened affected both of them. Now, when you look at this scripture uh, um, very well, you will see. In verse 6, now let me read voice translation. It said, God grace me with the gift of laughter. To be sure, everyone who hear my story will laugh with me. He said, who will have ever said to Abraham that Sarah will one day, come on, I love that word, nurse children. Yet I have given birth to his son at his late age in his life. I want to say someone, your story may look like this couple. But this, the, the, the spirituality of this text, of these two verses, is that the grace of God can change the story of a man or of a woman. He said, God has graced me with the gift of laughter. The baby was a gift. Like if you read from Hebrew chapter 11 verse 11, it said, when Sarah had judged God faithful, he received strength to conceive, even when it has ceased to be with her, like woman, like the, like the normal woman should be. I want you to know, stop looking at your predicament. Begin to look unto God for his engagement. The grace of God will always make a difference. The grace of God will always cover up for us our limitation and our barrier. Sarah said, who will have, who will have said to Abraham, Abraham, that Sarah will one day, will one day, this next days within the month of July will be your own set aside day that great thing will happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get ready to laugh. You know what he said? He said, God has, I mean, God has graced me with the gift of laughter. To be sure, come on. In fact, the word to be sure was almost in italic. He said, to be sure, everyone who hears my story will laugh with me. It's going to be a complete turnaround. A complete, everyone who hears the story, it will start from sadness to a joyful moment. It will start from what? A sad story. It will begin with a lot of questioning. It will begin with a lot of weeping. He said, but at the end, he will laugh with me. I pray for every one of us, the works of your hand, the, the life that you are living right now, as a ministry, as a congregation, as people on this platform, that ugly story, when people will hear it, when God will have turned it around and around, they will laugh with you. They will laugh with you. In other words, those who have, those who have laughed at you will now have occasion, no choice. They will be left with no choice but to laugh with you. I see that happening in your life and in my life in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What must I do to actualize this? If you check this passage of scripture and you compare it with other scripture, number one, in the devastating state of Sarah, the Bible says, eventually, she judged God faithful. She judged God faithful. 
she judged God faithful. We check that in Hebrew chapter 11 and verse 11. Keep on judging God faithful. God is not behind your situation. God is not against you. We must not apportion him blame. That's why you must make this, the, the, this seventh month a month that you celebrate, a month that you rejoice, a month that you glorify God. When you check the life of Abraham, what must you do? Because for Sarah, she judged God faithful. She kept on judging God faithful. And that was why the strength of God was made available. And you know the strength of God cannot fail. This month, the strength of God will not fail in your situation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when you look at Abraham, what was Abraham doing? We saw it in Romans chapter 4 and from verse 17. Number one, the Bible says, Abraham believed. If you look at verse 17 of Roman, of uh, verse 17 of chapter 4 of Roman, he said, As it written, I have made thee a father of nation before whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Abraham believed. Who did he believe? He believed God who can quicken the dead. And who called those things that be not as though they were? Abraham, as Sarah, on the side of Sarah, was judging God's faithful. Abraham kept on believing God and said to himself, My body may be dead, but I know one God that can quicken the dead. He, cre he created the body in the beginning. He can revive it. And he kept on believing him. The Bible actually went for the verse 18 and said, Who again so believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken? So shall thy seed be. Now, Abraham kept trusting God, believing God, based on what God has spoken concerning him and not based on what is going through. It is time we remove our eyes from what we are going through and put that eyes or that face onto the law. Remember, the Bible said they look unto him and they were lighting and their faces were not ashamed. In other words, their faces were full of glory. I pray for you this month. As you keep on judging God faithful in your life, as you keep on believing God, there is nothing faith cannot deliver. Because God cannot resist the invitation of faith. And when God is involved, good is about to be born. I pray for you. Your own Isaac in whichever area, whatever will represent your own Isaac, it shall be born to you. Against all odds, Isaac was born. Against all odds, from all quarters, in our age, both of them were old. But you see, the strength of God never failed. That strength was made available to our Lord Jesus Christ when he was going on the cross. He said, the Bible said, the angel came and strengthened him. You will not fail this month. You will not fail the remaining part of this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Abraham kept his faith. What was Abraham doing again? Verse 19 say, And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Put aside those factors that are evident that your situation cannot change. Put them aside. You see that in Philippians? He said, Be ye not terrified by your adversary, for to them is a token of perdition, but unto you. It is of God and salvation. Philippians chapter 1 verse 28. Abraham was not weak in faith. So he has no time to consider his feeling. Life is not in feeling. Life is in God. Life is not in what you see. Life is in God. For what you see is temporal. But that which is not seen is eternal. I pray for everyone online this morning. 
remove your eyes, grace to remove your eyes from not, what is not working and place it on God that work wonders, that makes a way where there is no way. He's a way maker. He does not need those things that you are considering to do what he has spoken to you because he does whatsoever, I mean, whatsoever pleases him. God is going to do amazing things in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 20 says, Is that not at the promise of God? True unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. I want to put this to you today. These are the things to be doing. Number one, keep on judging God's faithful. Number two, keep on believing him. Number three, remove your eyes from those things that are convincing you otherwise. Things are not, I mean, God can move despite the situation that is contrary to your life. Contrary wind of your life does not stop God. He can actually now soar through them. That's how who God is. He makes a way where there is no way. He does whatsoever pleases him. I want you therefore to get ready for jubilation and for celebration in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to repeat those things. Keep on judging God's faithful. Let nothing, let nothing, let nothing make you to blame God. Let nothing make you to blame God. Please judge him faithful. Judge him faithful. Recount his act in your life and found him faithful in your life. Number two, keep on believing God. Keep on believing God. Number three, remove your eyes. Remove your eyes from those things that are pointer that what God told you cannot happen. That's what Abraham did. He removed his eyes from his feeling. He removed his eyes from his body. He removed his eyes from the state of Sarah's womb. And then number three, he was glorifying God. And number four, and uh, number five, I think that should be number five. And then he was persuaded. The integrity of God, the integrity of God cannot fail you. Hold on to it. He said, I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised is able to perform. What he had promised is able to perform. God has said to us that we should make this month a month of celebration. And celebration cannot be dry. It means God is going to give us grace, grace for laughter. In the midst of your tears, hold on to this word and say, what I am seeing is temporary. And say to yourself, whatever I am seeing right now cannot be compared to the weight of glory that is coming. I pray for everyone that we will receive this engrafted word and, and, and set ourselves aside and have expectation that we are surely going to celebrate. I welcome you to your month of praise, your month of signs and wonder. He said, we walk a walk in your day that even if you are told, you will not believe. Get ready for unimaginable. Get ready for unimaginable act of God in your life. Get ready for unbelievable act of God in your life. Things that you never believe it can happen because of your present predicament. God will with them make a way for you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your going shall be where. Your going shall be where. You shall be a sort out this month. Where you least expect blessing, it will come your way. I speak prophetically into your life that every door that enemy will attempt to close, God will open them wider. He will give you the keys of life. He will guide your foot to a place where you have never known. He said, I will hold the hand of him that is blind, and I will lead him into blessing. God is leading you into amazing blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the month of celebration, anything can happen. Why? Because God does fearful things. There will be fearful healing. There will be fearful deliverances. There will be fearful door that God does a blessing that God will open in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and prosper you. I cover you with the precious blood of Jesus. I cover your household. Mourners will not gather at your door. Mourners will not gather at your door. Straight bullet will not hit you. 
the arrows of the wicked will not hit you as a target. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, there shall be grace for greatness as a gift from the Lord for you this month. Hannah said, sorry, Sarah said, he said, God has graced me with a gift that those who heard my story will laugh with me. Your life will become a center of conviction to others who never believe God exists. God will use you to showcase his power in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to your new month, your month of celebration, your month of praise, and your month of signs and wonder. And the teaching this month will be based on this. Get ready. Keep on celebrating. Keep on celebrating. And don't forget, keep on judging God's faithful. No matter what, judge him faithful. Keep on believing him. No matter what is happening, keep on believing God. Don't, don't, don't shift your faith from him. Keep on looking unto him. And then number three, remove your eyes from those things that are pointer. That what God has said to you, they are physical, but they are not as powerful as the voice of God. And number four, make sure by all means you are giving glory to God. And finally, be convinced and be certain that God has what it takes to deliver what he promised or what he has spoken. God bless you and prosper you. In case you have been listening to me, you are not born again. What a glorious moment. It is time to give your life to Jesus Christ. It is time to invite Christ into your life. Wherever you are, I want you to make up your mind. Start the new month by receiving Jesus. It will be a total, it will be a total change of game. It will be a total experience in your own life. Wherever you are right now, you are ready to receive Jesus. Shall we pray together? Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner, but I come unto you. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God and that you die and rose from the grave for my sake. I receive the perfect work of Calvary. And today I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. God bless you. If you have prayed that prayer with me, the banner on your screen, that is our contact. Feel free to call us and we'll be right there for you. The second banner at the physical, our physical address in different city. If you are close by us in any way, find it pleasurable to fellowship with us. And if you are not, we are not the only ministry. There are Bible-believing church around your neighborhood. Feel free to, to visit them and begin to fellowship with them. And let them know what you have done online today, and they will be able to guide you and direct you. God bless you and prosper you. And looking forward endlessly, to hear your testimony of a change of story. Be blessed in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And the rest of us, what a new day, what a new month, what a new way to start the, to start the new month, month of your celebration. You can also extend the celebration to financial celebration by giving an offering, by supporting this program, and enable us in your own way to preach the gospel. He said, through prosperity will my city be spread abroad. Wherever you are, cast your offering right now. All the avenue and the channel through which you can do that, the bank uh, details and the MPESA account has been displayed on your screen. As you do so, God bless you and prosper you. You are starting by giving to God. You will have no occasion to give to the devil in this new month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray over that offering? Heavenly Father, accept our offering. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom and in return, bless your people. Thank you, faithful Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Once again, welcome to a new beginning, a month of celebration, your month and your season of perfection. Basking in the glory of God as you praise him and basking in his wonders, for he does fearful things in praise. God bless you, no devil, we rob you of your joy in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Be blessed of God.